Pac-Mania by Namco was released into the arcades in 1987 and for its time it was quite the looker. Pac-Mania contains several new features and significant differences from its original counterpart. The most notable change was the view and the oblique Pseudo 3D format. In addition, the player can press a button to cause Pac-Man to jump, allowing him to evade most ghosts by jumping over them. However, Pac-Man cannot easily jump over two new green and grey ghosts, because they will jump whenever the player presses the jump button. In fact, he can't jump over the grey one at all. The number of rounds in Pac-Mania varies by version, 23 in Japan and 19 for the rest of the world. Oh my, I never expected the ZX Spectrum port to be fun, but there I was really getting into this port. The excellent renditions of the arcade soundtrack really do make this one shine. Some of the best music I've heard on the Specky in a long time. Playability wise, this is also a winner, although some people may be put off by the strange slow scrolling on the vertical plane. Amstrad CPC owners have been shafted again with yet another crappy ZX Spectrum port. This version is pretty much the same as the Specky version but now runs slower and Pac-Man is in yellow. The music may be better than the Spectrum port but that may be down to preference.
be completely honest, I was expecting something much better on the Commodore 64, but what it seems like we got was another version based upon the ZX Spectrum port. On the bright side, at least this has more colour, although a little ugly in selection. Same can be said about the music too. It just sounds drab compared to the ZX Spectrum. Well, it's nice to see that the MSX2 version of the game isn't based upon the specy version like so many MSX games, but it's still a disappointment. The main letdown is the play area size and the jerky scrolling. The collision detection is also a bit iffy at times too. I guess this could have been worse, but then again, it could have been better. Shame on Namco for not making a better effort. NES version was never officially licensed for play on the console, like most of Tengen, if not all Tengen games for the system. It's a shame too, as this port isn't that bad. Sure, it's got muted colours, the graphics look a little simple, and the audio is kind of a mess at times, but it's still playable and that's what matters. Mass System port comes to us from Tech Magic. It's surprisingly good in terms of looks and sound. In fact, the sound surprised me the most, considering the limitations of the Mass System sound chip. There's also a secret maze in the Sega Mass System version, which can be reached by eating all the regular pellets on the first round, 
then eating the special item that appears in the center of the maze. Man, is this ST port ugly or what? It's as if the developer didn't really bother to make it look nice. That's the least of its worries though. Other issues include music that's too fast and laggy jump mechanics. In stills, this Amiga port looks pretty good, but once it starts to move, you soon notice one of its massive issues, and that is sprite flicker. Really bad sprite flicker at that. It's a real shame too, as the presentation and sound, it's all pretty good in this port, but that sprite flicker really can cause issues. Ghosts can disappear, power ups vanish, and sometimes the bonus icons can't be seen. To add even more insult to injury, it has the same issues as the Atari ST port. Still, players who are not too good at Pac-Mania will still enjoy the Amiga port due to it being rather easy. I remember playing the Archimedes version of Pac-Mania back in school. Our computer lab was full of 8-bit BBC Micros, but we did have this one awesome computer in the corner called the Acon Archimedes. We thought it was on par with arcade machines, and looking at Pac-Mania, you can see why. While this version is slower than the arcade, it's all there. Looks great, plays great, and sounds, well, maybe not great, but good enough. The music is a little twangy to be honest. Still, a great port for a little knowing computer. Thank you. 
After seeing the Acorn Archimedes, you'd expect the Mega Drive version to be just as good. I mean, there's no reason why the Mega Drive port shouldn't be close to Arcade Perfect, but unfortunately, it's kind of hit and miss. For example, the first stage looks bloody awful, with its drab colours and crappy rendition of the main music. But then stage 2 looks nice and colourful, as it should, plus has better music. I suppose this is to be expected when software creations were behind this port. Zebo, for those who didn't know, is a console that was only available in Brazil and Mexico. There were plans for the China release, but that never happened. Zebo games could only be downloaded over 3G mobile networks. There was no SD card slot, no optical media, and no USB. The Zebo was home to many games such as Ridge Racer, Resident Evil 4, and even Pac Mania. As you can see, this is a port that's very similar to the arcade original, not bad at all. So what do we have here? Yep, you guessed it, an Arcade Perfect port for the Sharp X68000. Nothing much more to say really, apart from the X68000 has done it again. Wicked, 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 wicked
Pac-Mania for the Game Boy Advance is actually part of the Pac-Man collection. This port is practically arcade perfect, but with one major downside that a lot of Game Boy Advance ports suffer with. Yep, it's zoomed in, making it tough to see the ghosts at times. While this wouldn't really matter on the earlier levels, it does matter on the later ones, due to the speed at which they move. Still, if the zoomed in luck doesn't bother you, then you'll really enjoy this port. And here we go, finishing off with the PlayStation port. This version can be found on the Namco Museum Volume 5. I have it on good authority that this is not emulation, but actually reprogrammed for the PlayStation. Unfortunately, my version is glitched to death, so I do apologise for that. So how's the game? Well, as to be expected, it is based upon the Japanese arcade release, meaning it has the extra levels and, well, it just seems like the arcade version. Pretty much a perfect port, despite the lower looking resolution. And let's take a look at all those versions of Pac-Mania running side by side. Mm -hmm. 